Read in bed and bed. Hi everyone, this is Amanda Nicholson and this is a special episode of Reading in Bed. There's no Andy N here today. There's just me and some clips from several poets who are in my anthology, which is called Nobody Left Behind. So I'm going to start by introducing you to the first one, and that is Exposure by Rosemary Moore. Exposure. Politicians spend money investigating parties. They're dying from exposure of their flaws. You overspend on fuel in November, get overdrawn in December. By January, it's frigid, but your overdraft is rigid. Come February, snowdrops peak through snow. In bed, your toes are warm, cheeks red, nose drips. In the kitchen, cupboards bare, shiver, cold, reactions slow, enzymes slow, no return, hypothermia. The next two poems come from the same person, and that is the wonderful Elaine Savage. And the first one you're going to hear from her is called Togetherness. Walking in the rain, him with his umbrella, as I wore my carrier bag from Lidl. Romantic surprise of sharing a bag of chips instead of being taken to a boring restaurant. Despite living in the car, I am loving my new kitchen, a gift from the pound store, a blue washing up bowl. Who cares about running water when you can see the sky in a bit of plastic? It's so romantic every night, a view of the stars. I only need to stick my head out of the car window. Who needs leg room to sleep when you can get your leg over whenever you fancy it? Gear stick permitting. We also have our very own bar. Yes, almost a pub. Whoever said that white lightning cider was a few sups short of a cocktail has little taste. Indeed, our clientele come from all walks of life. Some are steadier on their feet than others, but they are all connoisseurs of the nectar, which is also unkindly labelled loony juice. Indeed, we have come to call this park bench our own after the car was repossessed. Still, we keep the romance alive. On balmy nights, I take off my wig and we danced to the rhythm of the sirens, never forgetting our honeymoon. Back when he was Prime Minister, and me his paramour, if only. <laughs> and now you're going to hear another poem from Elaine Savage, and this one's called Foxy. The local foxes have started to befriend me, probably because I smell having cut down to one shower a week, you know, to save on the lecky. The other night I got out of my car and there was one of our local foxes just looking at me. The fox came over and sniffed me, nodding his head in an approved way. Obviously, not showering much is an advantage in Foxland. I followed him and soon we came to his lair. Not a lot to write home about structurally, but inside it was full of foxes who were holding what looked like musical instruments. They were fashioned from bits of wood and had strings which looked suspiciously like they had come from living creatures as they had flecks of what looked like blood sticking to them. Having travelled around a bit and observed that people have different customs, I try and fit in where I can. Imagine my surprise when one of the foxes offered me an instrument. It was not the guitar or banjo of my dreams, but it did have four strings. Nothing in the way of frets, but then my fretting was enough. I began strumming the instrument and singing. Initially, the foxes seemed happy. Halfway into my set, one of them stood up and said, we were promised Springsteen if we made the instruments. Then they all started to get angry. Well, I did what any red-bloody woman would do in those circumstances. I offered them a recording deal. And that is why me and the feral slow foxes are trying to hit the big time. Thank you. (laughs) 
Only Today by Amanda Nicholson. If today was the last day to speak your truth, before it was suffocated in lies, and retrieving it felt like wading through quicksand, would you finally speak freely or continue to say you don't do politics? If today was the last day to show how you feel, to forget about self-imposed barriers and hear what others have to say, would you continue to talk over them and play the same broken record instead? If today is all you get to make a change, will you still put off until tomorrow with wafer thin excuses? Or will you take your last chance before everything you take for granted is stripped away and you're left out in the cold forever? Before I introduce the last poem, I just want to remind you that the anthology is out on the 27th of January, so if you're listening to this podcast before then, it can be pre-ordered from Amazon and various ebook platforms, as well as in paperback. And all the proceeds go to Mustard Tree, which do a lot of good work in Manchester. So get a copy of the book and support the charity. And the last poem that you're going to hear is by Ruth O'Reilly. And this is called No Vaccine for This. A No Vaccine for This by Ruth O'Reilly. I'm wearing a jumper. I'm wearing a hat. So desperate for heat, I'm hugging a cat. And no... I'm not sitting outside in the park. I'm here at my flat, sat in pitch dark. Nothing is dropping except for my jaw. Cost of my shopping, twice the price of before. And we've all had our jabs to protect from a virus. Yet we're dying instead from an economic crisis. Read in bed. 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 Read in bed.